Hey there, retailers. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about <laughs> retailers' grip, uh, really being prepared for anything, you know, even skunk gate. So uh, stick with me. I'll share a story of how to get through just about anything. And I know you've all been dealing with a lot of things right now. So stick around. Let's have a chat about how we can be prepared and uh, ready for the next thing coming. Running a creative retail business really shouldn't be so hard. I'm Wendy Batten, and this is the Creative Shop Talk podcast. Okay, friends, I know it's been trying times. These have been exceptional times, and we we just have never seen anything like this. It's the first time that we've been going through anything collectively, and this isn't a podcast about dealing with COVID or anything else going on. I want to talk to you about being prepared, being ready, being um able to weather the storm and the next storm and the next storm, because to be honest, my friend, being an entrepreneur means we need to be ready. There's always going to be um, something else coming and just resting easy, knowing that you're prepared for just about anything. I know nobody could prepare for a world pandemic and, you know, but we, we are seeing people who had really good um, things in place, not panicking and well, everybody panicked a little bit, but not like stressing as much as others did. I have seen a clear line in the sand of retailers who felt more prepared or who had stronger foundations than those who didn't. This has become, you know, a, a really hard time because it's been super collective, like everybody's doing it. So if we want to get prepared to climb out of this recession and, you know, thrive through Q3 and Q4, there's lots of things that maybe we can put in place. Again, you hear me talk about foundations foundational things and uh, uh, foundational core values that we need to have. And I just wanted to give you some real tangible things that you can think about and look at to to build that plan. Uh, You know, we just need to build our entrepreneurial grit. I keep saying that word. Somebody said that to me the other day and I thought, this is the best word because that's what we need. We need to dig deep into our core and prepare for whatever is going to be next. I've been speaking to um, the CEO mindset. You've all heard me talking about the retailer's mindset, C- CEO mindset. Um, I know I'm repetitive on that. <laughs> I know I am, but I do that on purpose. It's such a big core foundational um, need for retailers. And once I see retailers, kind of the light bulb goes on and they start thinking of themselves as the CEO of their business, they start taking things like being prepared and building their foundations more and more. They just, they, it's just, it's a shift in your mindset. And again, I'm going to, you're going to hear me talk about it all the time on this podcast, because that is a really important way to think about our business. So it's really another way of just saying personal growth. Uh, and, And that's what entrepreneurial is, right? It's a journey of personal growth. We're always learning, always shifting, always changing, always learning new things, everybody is. There's no end. It never ends. It does not stop. So we have a tendency as entrepreneurs to stay where we're strong, right? We stay where we're strong. That's, you know, it's, it's easier. I know you're still working really hard and doing all the things, but it is easier to stay where we're strong. So for a lot of the retailers I work with, they stay in the creative, you know, wor- the creative side of their business, maybe merchandising. They're, they're good at ordering, you know, beautiful things. They're excellent at customer service and selling. And, you know, they, all of those things they're strong in, they're working really hard and they're working at it and they're busy, but that's where they're strong. And I have a tendency to see where we kind of avoid the harder things, the things we're not so strong in. And that's actually what we need to build up. Um, We need to work on the things that are the backside of our business, maybe where you're not as strong. Um, And those are the things that will help us get through. Give us a little more grit, as they say. So I want you to remember, people are counting on us right? People are counting on us, not just, you know, maybe it's to bring a paycheck home, or maybe it is your staff, or maybe it's your family. Um, And, you know, maybe it's just your customer, or not just your customers, but maybe it's also your customers. And I'm sure they are counting on you. So people are counting on us to make this business a success, right? And we want it to be. So we want to be as prepared as we can for whatever's next. 
I'm not kidding, but I've kind of been joking about like Godzilla coming next because it's been just one sort of thing after the other, after the other. And, you know, retailers with grit are just moving through, moving through. Retailers with really strong core foundations are, you know, they're standing a little bit stronger right now. I'm seeing them be the ones that are kind of thriving through this, doing excellent through it. So, you know, if you want to stop winging it and you want to be much more prepared for the next thing, you know, stick with me. I'm going to, I'm going to share some tips with you here today. So again, challenges are going to keep coming. Um, and again, it, again, it's our job to just keep learning and learning and learning as the owner of these beautiful businesses that we're running. So I mentioned at the top of the story about my skunks or skunk gate, you know, back years and years ago with my story, I can't believe I'm sharing about my skunks, but some of you may know the story. If you've been in my inner circle, I've shared this story a few times, but I had uh, our studio uh, from which Mercantile was located in an old barn, um, you know, which was great. You know, it was fine. It was an older building, drafty, creaky, but that was okay. Right. But skunks moved in underneath my floor one year. So I would think we were maybe two years into my business and, you know, really busy and things were great and, you know, customers and, you know, this, we were doing workshops in those days, uh, tons and tons of workshops, selling paint, furniture, custom work. Um, I had uh, tons of giftware, that type of thing going on at the time. And, you know, we saw a skunk one day outside and kind of freaked out. A customer saw it actually. And then the next day there was another. And anyway, it just, we all, it was becoming a problem. And then one day we came in and the store smelled horrible. Now, I don't know what happened, but all I can tell you is you, we couldn't even go in the store and it was everywhere. And I cried and I cried. It was awful. The store was, um, just and it was just awful. We had workshops we had to cancel. It ended up being over a week of no um, workshops, a no store being opened, um, custom work that was inside the store. Um, we had smell in it. We couldn't get out of the smell. So I was closed for a week, lost all that business, and trying to deal with all of that. And I had to pay a ton of money to a skunk guy. I don't even still know what his title was. As I was researching for the podcast, I was like, I don't even know what he was called. Like, I don't know. He took them away to a farm and I don't know wherever he took them, but he came and he caught them. And there were dozens of skunks here, folks, dozens. He came back every day, had a trap in the parking lot. So we had to put signs up in the parking lot not to come. It was just is really, really not a cool time. And it was very expensive to have this guy come and every day, dozens and dozens and dozens of skunks. I am not exaggerating. It was like, yep, he got another. Yep, he got another. And um, on, on a side note, my uh, building was owned by my best friend who owned a yoga studio, which was attached to my store. So also, there were there was no yoga either. So she was going through the same thing. Like yoga studio was closed. The paint studio was closed. It was really a hard time to be two independent retailers. And it was skunks. So I share this because we just don't know what's coming next. So, you know, the, the, the whole skunk gate, in, uh, ironically, um, in the three years that I've been coaching retailers full time, I've seen lots of other things. And I actually had a retailer call me in a panic one day on a Sunday morning. And I saw her number and I answered the phone and she's screaming in the phone, what do I do about skunks? So she had the same issue happen to hers. But I've been working with retailers over the last uh, three years that have had, um, we've seen hurricane damage. I've seen flood. Uh, I've had two retailers have their, their studios burned down. I've helped retailers with like issues of break-ins, um, employee theft. I actually talk about my situation with an employee um, back in uh, episode 15. I talk about you know, my employees stealing from me um, and, you know, being prepared for that. 
Um, you know, uh, there's just all kinds of things that come up. These are storms in our business. These are things we need to be prepared for. So again, lots of storms means we, we need lots of grit. We need lots of being prepared for this. So if you're committed to the success of your business, you're going to want to be as prepared as you can. That's our job, right? As the, as the CEO, as the leader of this business, we have to protect our business. So again, having this strong core value, being prepared, it doesn't mean we're not going to be shaky and doesn't mean we're going to have a plan in place for dealing with skunks or any of the other things that might come our way. But it does mean we'll have some, some things in place so we won't crumble, I guess is what I, where, where I'm kind of going with this. But so again, I've been working with retailers inside my inner circle um, that have been, you know, working on these foundations bit by bit. Everybody's in a different situation. Everybody's in a different place working on their foundation and their personal growth. Um, we're going to continue to work on this. As I mentioned, it's just one of those things we're always going to be doing. And um, what I've been seeing is that the, the having these things in place has been um, really allowing them to to thrive through this, you know, and, and not crumble. I'm not saying again that we haven't had, you know, some things just thrown at us that we just can't deal with. And, you know, we have to crumble a little bit, but then we can build back up because we have these pillars and these strong things in place. So a few things that I've seen happening um, with my retailers, you know, I've seen some able to just quickly jump into action. I've had some of them being able to make super um, uh, important decisions financially about their business. Um, because they have all the information, they know their math, right? They know the numbers. They're 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 able to make quick decisions. Another thing that I've seen happen with the inner circle members, uh, and my level up members, and my coaching clients is a lot of them have been prepared mindset wise. You know, they're, they started looking for the opportunities right away instead of you know all the oh what was me stuff, which you know maybe that was a day or they moved on or maybe you know it took a while, but there's tons of opportunities through this, you know, this situation as well too. So um, again, just having really good core values and having good, um, uh, not values, but having core foundational pillars is really, really helpful to you as well. So it's not too late. And this is a really good time to maybe start working on the next thing, right? Well, the next thing it's, you know, tangible things that you can do now, just, I know you're busy and I know things are still crazy and chaotic, but it's still a good time to start thinking through these things. Maybe even if it's just making some notes on, um, you know, I need to do this and, and grab a notebook and let's let's chat about a few things. So one of the things that I have seen retailers not prepared for is insurance. And make sure your insurance is up to date, my friends. Make sure that we are checking our, in, our insurance regularly. Um, one of my retailers had purchased insurance for her store and, you know, at X number of inventory and inventory insurance. And um, when uh, a disaster happened, she wasn't able, she didn't have enough money in her because she had grown her inventory, but not her insurance to cover it. Um, if you purchase equipment, if you do, you know, anything that you're adding on, which we are normally adding on assets all the time and inventory balances and all of these things, it's a simple thing, but it's one of those things that, yeah, I'll do later. Yeah, I'll do later, right? But let's make sure that your insurance is updated. Um, another thing is making sure all your business documents are updated. Make sure that your everything is, you know, you are in compliance with everything. I know, again, a silly thing to be talking about, you know, during a pandemic, but some of the uh, retailers that I work with didn't have um, the proper uh, business registration. So when it came to some of the loans and things that were, you know, there were some delays and confusion and paperwork back and forth, just keep everything updated, keep everything good, right? Making sure that we are maintaining good credit, good debt control. I know this is stuff we might have to work on, but just this is really, really key during hard times, during storms, during these stormy times, right? Having savings in your account or having access to money that you can tap into if you need to, to pay the rent, as we saw what happened here to a lot of retailers, um, again, during the pandemic. So we need to make sure that we have, and we're prepared for emergencies exactly like this, right? Another thing that um, I've asked, I always um, mention to people, and it, it's an intangible, I don't know, it's not really a thing you can say and go and do tomorrow, but building relationships, um, we do not need to be walking through all of your these things alone. 
And a lot of retailers don't have relationships with people. And I, I don't mean it that way. Like, you know, they have customers or, you know, spouses and that kind of thing. But, you know, we should have a business team. That's what I like to call them, a business team um, and relationships with those people. So a business team can consist of, you know, your accountant, your bank. You know, we talked about this back in, uh, you know, episodes when we talked about uh, preparing for, you know, getting through COVID, but, you know, having, um, you know, having a, a mentor, having a local business association that you have a connection with, that you have a relationship with, um, that you can, you know, say, you know, pull together if you need to, or you can go and ask, you know, you know, again, we don't know what's going to go on. What I saw with the pandemic was a lot of my retailers had relationships with their local business communities and they were able to establish, you know, Facebook groups and, uh, you know, curbside pickup on a certain day and they, they all worked together. It was really, really beautiful to watch some of those uh, relationships um, unfold and collaborations happen. Um, but having a really strong business team. So I really encourage everybody to have a, you know, business mentor or coach personally my, I had to lean into my coach several times during this. Uh, I, I can't imagine honestly getting through without having my coach to have le- been able to lean t- into. And you know, I have a couple of coaches, so you know, I was leaning into them a lot so that I could lean into my people and you know, they could say, okay, stop panicking and you know, help me sort of s- suss through what needed to happen and what my steps needed to be. Um, and we all need that in our life. So I hope, I hope you have somebody there to do that as well. Um, having a, a relationship again with your accountant and your bank you know, don't be a stranger to those people because if you need them, they'll be there. My accountant, I have a relationship with. So, you know, yes, I just get my taxes done every year with my accountant and we have conversations back and forth. Um, If you, you know, if you are an established business, you need an accountant. You need to have, if you want to be the CEO and be a business, you need an accountant to help you. Even if it's just once in a while checking in, (laughs) it really makes a difference. My accountant was invaluable to me through this and some of the, you know, the grants and loans that were out and, you know, just giving me a little bit of advice or did you know about this and, you know, don't do that or here's how you manage this. It just, it's just an important thing. And also sometimes just being able to reach out to those people is really important as well too, just to be able to pick up the phone and be able to call them when you need to. Um, we, we aren't meant to do business alone. We are not meant that it's, it's actually arrogant of us to think that we don't need people. We don't need a team. We don't need coaches. Um, And I say that because, you know, when we have people that can help advise us, they look at our business from a different point of view. If we're only in our business, we're only looking at it from like one point of view. And, you know, we can't think outside the, like we can think outside the box, but we can't see what they see. And, you know, uh, people that have been ahead of us, people that have already done things before, um, you know, again, it's kind of, arrogant of us to think that we know every single thing about every single thing and we don't need anybody's help. Like when I, that was first said to me, I was like, Oh yeah. Like I just, I like to do it all. I like to be in control of my business, but you're right. I need other people to look at it and to help me through it as well. Again, your business team is really important. Um, Having really good, strong systems in place. You'll hear me talk all the time about systems and, you know, um, uh, operating procedures and having these things in place during hard times really come in, uh, come into play as well too. You know, another really big thing, and this is an, again, an intangible thing that we have to build up as we go through. It's your customer community. It's your customer base. And I will tell you right now, oh gosh, you guys watching how customers have been showing up for retailers that have built the no like, and trust and built amazing communities. That has been just a savior for a lot of retailers through pandemic time. Anyway, I know, um, you know, just watching how customers have like patient and, you know, uh, they've been showing up, they've been trying to like buy gifts and gift cards. And I mean, I'm not, I, if you're a retailer and you're listening to this, I hope that over this pandemic, you're smiling right now, thinking about how your customers showed up because, Again, I've just, I just I see what I see with my retailers that I work with, and I see the you know the inner circle people that I work with, my coaching group people, and just 
one report after the other, after the other, you know, one, we, we have a culture of uh, celebrating wins and the good things that happen. And every week during pandemic, you know, I must say there were still wins and they almost always included, you know, oh my gosh, my customers, if somebody brought me a cake or, you know, they, somebody, you know, just, just showing up in ways that were just amazing. Um, I share a story um, back in episode 15, how my customers, showed up for me when I had, uh, you know, a hard time before and having a community of customers that love you and support you. That is the goal, right? That is part of why we do what we do. And it's, you know, it's, we call it the circle of awesomeness. You know, they, they love us and we love on them and they love back on us. And it's just, it's really just a really great way to run a business. It's a feel good, heart centered, um, wonderful way to run a business. And I've been super, um, I'm smiling now thinking about all the, all the retailers that I've seen have their customers show up. So, uh, make sure your customers, so keep building on that community. If you're new, if you're listening to this and you're thinking about starting a store, this is something that you are going to want to have in your core values at the very beginning is you just want to make sure that you are offering, you know, you are building a community, not just running a store. And that's what I see uh, with my inner circle people. So again, having a community of peers to support you as well, that is another key thing. So I can only speak from what I see with my inner circle people and with the um, inner circles and the communities that I'm in with peers that, you know, being able to go there and, you know, vent and, you know, have conversations and brain dump and all the things. Uh, that's actually even my skunk story. My skunk story, um, the ending of my skunk story is it was my customers that were amazing through it all. I think it was my, a customer that found, found the skunk dude for me. And, you know, it was just it was just customers that were really supportive through it all again. So you, we want to have a community of customers. We want to have a community of peers as well too. Oh, and I like, yeah, I also had like um, uh, business peers that helped you know, help me. They offered space to me and everything during all that. It's just, it's just really feels good. Right. So, and one thing I'm super proud of through this whole stormy, yucky time is my inner circle retailers who were leaning in on each other. Um, and they brought like collective wisdom. Like it's all I can call it is collective wisdom together. So, you know, everybody inside the, in our group coaching program, they, they all understood. There was like no explanation. Needed, right? Like we all, we all got it. Like we know being forced to be closed and, and the fear that was there, if you remember back at the beginning when COVID first hit, you know, was also, you know, are we all going to get sick or our family's going to get sick? What is happening here? And, and, you know, it was, it was scary. There were a lot of tears. Then, you know, there were also cheers, like when it came to like people saying like, I figured this out, or I did, figured out how to do virtual workshops. And, you know, here's what we're doing for curbside pickup. And, you know, so there was tons of positive collective um, wisdom and, and, and ideas coming together. And, you know, every, this is working for me and that's working for me. And, and it was just, it was beautiful to me to watch as a leader of and facilitator of a group. It really was um, genuine connections with fellow retailers. And even those that maybe aren't like full in, in their chatting. And there was, you know, some people, everybody processes differently. Um, I've had conversations with people like, you know, just knowing they could go there and, you know, read the stories and hear, um, hear conversations because we had a lot, lots of live group calls during the beginning of all of that. And we need people to lean in on and we need people to understand. And i super proud that we uh, were able to do that for so many retailers and to be honest, I've seen so many of them thrive through this. It's, it's sometimes it's hard not to celebrate all of what's happened. And I know that's not everybody, but I have seen it happen. And it's, you know, it's just been super rewarding. And all of them, when we talk about it uh, in the group, will say it's because of the ideas and the, the, the cheering on and like we were cheerleading each other and proud of each other. And it's just, it was, it was really great. So I know we can't prepare for everything, my friends, I know, but really dedicated, smart retailers um, have to have the right things in place. Like we have to sit down and make sure we're having plans. And there's so many other things that we could, you know, we, I could talk here for, you know, hours of things that we need to prepare on, but you know, the basics are building up our core foundational pillars of our business and having the right people, customers, business team, 
and peers all in place so that when things do go sideways, you can go to those people. You can go to those systems that you've put in place. You can say, oh my gosh, this skunk gate is happening. What do I do? You know, the retailer that called me on a Sunday morning, <laughs> you know, she knew she could come to me, you know, and we, and someone's already walked the path before her, believe it or not, if you can, about the skunks, like other, you know, again, collective wisdom. So be as prepared as you can, you know, as much as you can, because there is something else coming. And if it doesn't come, it's fine. Like it's going to be good. At least you'll sleep at night knowing that you're preparing yourself, you know, for, again, I, I keep calling it the next storm because there's just so many things that can happen. And again, our personal growth, we need to just make sure we're getting stronger and stronger to deal with these and punch them right in the face. That's what I said to somebody the other day. I just want to, if Godzilla comes next week, because who knows that could happen next, right? I just want, I'm going to, I'm, I'm ready to punch him in the face because I'm tired and I'm not a violent person. I don't mean it that way, but you know, there's just been so much. And if you're a retailer and you're listening to this right now, you know, I'm sending you a big virtual hug because it has been, it's been a lot, right? So it's been a lot. So please take some time to think about your next storm. Like just be ready for the storm, get your umbrella out and get your rubber boots on and get ready for it. Like it's just being prepared is going to make you feel so much better. So, you know, think about what you can work on and what you can put in place and who you can lean into, like who's in your corner, who are those people. So um, if I can support you in any way along this journey of a retail <laughs> business and retail life, please, please, please reach, reach out to me. Um, you can reach me at wendybatten.com. Um, you can also join my free Rockstar Creative Group if you're not a member already. Uh, the link uh, is in the show notes as well. Um, um, you know, let's continue the conversation over in my free group. And, you know, we would love to have you join us inside the inner circle. Again, lots of library, um, lots of tools that we offer in there, lots of community in there just for times like this too. Um, so we will be opening, we open the inner circle a few times a year. This particular, when we're I'm recording this, we will be opening on June 21st, if you are listening. So we would love to have you inside. If you've missed us, you can jump on a wait list. And if you're listening to this later, uh, jump on a wait list and, you know, join us next time. But please reach out. I also work one on one with retailers, and there's other ways we can work together. I don't want to see any retailers um, struggling through, especially if you're trying to put plans in place. Um, so thank you, my friends. Uh, I am wishing you a Calm, happy week. I hope uh, things are going good with lots of sales and lots of um, productive, good things happening for you. And again, big virtual hug to everybody. We all uh, we all need real hugs. <laughs> we all need real hugs if you're still in lockdown. But um, I'm going to send you a virtual hug, and I think you're doing amazing. I think that you're doing great things for the world, and I am sending you all the love. So we'll talk soon. Thanks. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I know how precious your time is and I'm so appreciate you uh, taking time out of your crazy day to be here with us. All the links for today's show can be found at wendybatten.com slash podcast. We'd also like to invite you to come over and continue the conversation over on my free Facebook group. It's called Rockstar Creatives. I'm going to be popping in there live every week to continue the conversation, talk a little bit about what we spoke about today. And I'd love for you to join us over there, Rockstar Creatives on Facebook. I'd also love to ask if it's not too much trouble, if you could leave me a review and let me know what you think of the podcast. If you're loving the show, be sure that you're subscribing to the podcast so you don't miss an episode. I'd hate for you to miss one. It's been such a pleasure to be here with you today. I'll see you next week here on the Creative Shop Talk podcast.